Hello everyone, my name is Allie, and I've been creating this little intro series on each of the rookie decks in case you are new to Parallel, new to the mechanics, and you want a visual guide of someone walking you through the general strategy and certain things to look out for. And of course, I've saved the best for last. Shroud lovers rise up. So I'm gonna take you through a Shroud match with the rookie deck here, and again, talk about the strategy and key things to look out for. Uh, so let's get started, and thanks for watching. All right, so Shroud. My favorite parallel is the only parallel that has access to the singularity, and it's very much the control uh, class of the game. Like, for example, this card demolecularize, banish all units. So when it says banish, that is not just killing a unit, it is banishing it to the singularity. So let's do this quickly so we don't uh, miss our mulligan. You only have 30 seconds for your mulligan, so make sure you pick quickly and confirm. Because if you just have it highlighted like this and you don't click confirm, uh, your cards, uh, it, you won't actually register the mulligan. All right, so we're going first here. And these, gosh, these are very, very slow but they lose their value if you get rid of uh, any one of them. So you need to play all three in order to summon this 9-9. Nine -nine. So I, oh gosh, I could just use this as bank fodder and keep this, but I don't really want this either. So, because um, we have nothing in the singularity right now. So we're just gonna play this and get our uh, steward developed. Definitely um, amazing card, your singularity steward. Every time that a unit is banished, uh, the unit gains plus two, plus one. So this thing can really spiral out of control and definitely needs to be answered from the opponent. Amazing. Okay, we're off to a great start. I'm going to make the decision to bank the sacred destruction just because, again, our hand, like, this is probably too slow right now, but if it was like a control match where I really want to summon the 9-9 at the end of the game, um, you'd want to hold these. But if I bank one, I can bank the other, but it is still a kill spell. It, it reads, destroy a target unit, and then if you've played all of them, summon the 9-9. Okay, so Life Siphon, uh, if you kill a unit, it banishes it, it instead of just killing it. So you'll see, we're going to banish the Mercenary Gunslinger here, <laughs> and our little steward is going to grow. Let me get the attack in. And you can always check your singularity here, just like you could check your waste. Um, so these two units are in the singularity, and a lot of cards in Shroud read, play a card from your singularity, and, and different things like that. So it's like a graveyard that you can interact with, and I just think it's so cool. That's why Shroud is my favorite uh, parallel. So the Paragon of, um, okay, they're working to, to clear it. Oh my gosh, double PS8. Honestly, that's a bummer that we lost our steward, but they had to use two cards in order to get through it, so I suppose we're fine with that, but hopefully we have a castable card because our hand is super clunky right now. Oh god. Okay. Normally I bank recon because I don't really think it's that great of a card, but our hand is not so good, so I am actually going to bank uh, the other Sacred Destruction and play the recon for some card draw, and I think... I'm going to select a unit, because I think there's probably a unit in there, but against Ogancore I could pick an upgrade. It's kind of a tough one, so. Uh, you reveal two cards, select the two, and then if you guess right, like if one of these is a unit, um, whoa. Um, wow, neither one of them was a unit. That's why I do not like that card. So, uh, because it wasn't one of the selected types there, we did not get the draw. So that is quite a bummer. <laughs> That's okay. Okay, so, the paragon of this rookie deck is Brand, Steward Eternal. And he is a 5 cost, 4-6, that reads, After Brand damages another unit, banish that unit, transformed into a 4-4 Corrupted Vision. And then when he dies, he will bring all the Corrupted Visions um, from the Singularity uh, to the board. So it starts out with one automatically in the Singularity, so you'll always get at least one of the Corrupted Visions out of him. That's what's in the Singularity right, na right now. But when he hits the board and every single time he damages units, he's shuffling four fours into the Singularity, and when he dies, boom, comes back from the board. Uh, okay. So this is one of your best cards. Uh, Honored Steward with the Muster ability. Uh, banish target enemy until this leaves the battlefield. So I think I'm just gonna play that. It's mana efficient, um, and I don't really want them to have units to be able to attach stuff to because that's what Ogancore does. 
So let's see. This is choose a card in your deck, draw it, and then shuffle it into your deck. I honestly think that the T Interceptor might be more useful than the Power Instructor. And I guess we probably don't need the Inspiring Teacher too. We just have so many fives, because remember, Brand's a five as well. All right, we can get tossed the teacher at this point, and we're gonna just play the steward. Uh, this does have shielded, but shielded is only from blocked from effect cards, so uh, we were actually able to target, you know, the the unit with uh, the honored steward. But the unit will come back once this dies. Hopefully, this just lives forever. Ooh, okay, so the Agincor, um Juggernaut here is going to have, uh, has one counter left, so at the end of this turn, uh, he's going to summon one of the three uh, Juggernaut workshops. <clears throat> Let's see. So that is the salvage ability, meaning, um, but also the battle cry you may uh, attach an upgrade with three cost or less from your waist. So uh, he put the ocular implant on it, so that's not too bad. Hopefully they don't develop another, oh no, never mind. Another minion will be developed, so when we shoot this thing for three with the T-Interceptor, uh, the salvage ability will allow him to move that ocular implant to this um, unit. Okay, so options are to bank something and then play the T-Interceptor on this again. We could also just get our brand developed because, again, every time he damages units, it's good for us because more and more 4-4s four are getting shuffled in. I'm pretty tempted just to get brand on the board right now, but also shooting that down is, is a viable play. I think we don't need the little one cost at this point. I think I am going to get brand down, and we are just going to go face here. There's no like kill switch on the board, which is the upgrade that, you know, once the upgraded unit dies, it can take out a uh, a unit. So if I can get an extra 4-4 four, four in, like I'm thinking maybe the sooner I get this down, the easier I'll, it'll be to get value out of them. So, uh, the, so Erasure, definitely one of your best cards in Shroud. It's just a three cost kill spell. Um, it banishes target unit, so that unit will go into Singularity. <laughs> if you're a control player in card games, again, this is probably the class for you. That's why I like it. I've always been a more of a control player than an aggro player. So it's very much uh, my style. Okay, so let's see what up... Okay, so this has a kill switch on it. So we definitely want to... If we're going to kill this, we need to damage, get the value, damage a unit so we get another 4-4 four, four, and then wind up killing it. Um, What would we like to take out? The 2-3 or the technician? Oof. Because I'm pretty sure I'm going to T-interceptor this. We could also use the steward on this because the kill switch won't trigger, which is honestly a pretty decent play too. But it's an opportunity to take this out when this only has three health, which it will grow if more and more upgrades get on it. So let's see, if I take this out and I shuffle that in, they can just trade this off and kill this and get this back. So I think I'm going to just toss the instructor. I think I'm going to take this out. So another one gets shuffled in. So I'm only going to get two four fours out of it, but I think that's okay. And we're going to play the T-Interceptor. And just take this thing out while we still can. The kill switch is definitely going to trigger. Um, they're going to kill the brand. And then we're going to pull out the two four fours. And just make sure we banked. We did. Okay, cool. I'm kind of holding on to this eight cost. I'm a little bit worried that this won't get value because a lot of their units have shielded. And again, shielded blocks the first effect that is played on a unit. So... You know, I'm hoping that I could get lucky and steal one of their, you know, upgraded units. Um, but if it has shielded like this one does, it could be tricky to get value. You can see how strong Brand is. Like, just even getting one hit off of him, still summon two four fours. Like, he's just really good, particularly in the rookie mode. 
Okay, so that probably had armed. Yep, so it works like first strike and magic. Got to take out my 3-3 three, three for free. Okay, so Juggernaut's gonna get uh, summoned at the end of his next turn there. Uh, ooh, that is very, very interesting. Okay, I think I'm gonna keep banking these because again, we've already banked the other two, so it's only it's just a six mana kill spell, which is pretty expensive. And it's just got the armed on it. Okay, I think. We are going to select this, banish it for the time being, and if I don't want them to get it back with their th deal three juggernaut, I'd have to trade trade here. But that means they're going to take out one of these, which is honestly... I do think getting eight damage into the face there is... Very nice, but I am comfortable with controlling the game as of right now. Picking up this little uh, life siphon could be that it, on turn 10, if they played a big, you know, you, or an, a unit was really upgraded uh, and it had shielded, I could just trigger the little shield here and then steal it, but that's kind of situational. Okay, that was a bummer. They did annihilate our 4 4, they, so they got this back. I mean, I could do the same thing where I could just trigger the shield up here and then just erasure it, which might be what I have to do. We're going to summon the workshop and probably go for the 2-5 that deals 3, killing 1. So I'm going to have 1 minion left. <clears throat> oh my gosh. Okay, that's fine with me. They went for the 3-6 with Defender. Okay, let's see. What is this? Uh, put target card from your waist and target card from your singularity into your hand. Take four damage. Is there anything that's in the waist that we really want? Ooh, I would take another one of those. And what's in my singularity? A mercenary gunslinger. I mean, actually, that's like really good. Want one of these. And we'll take the gunslinger. And I think we're gonna bank another one here. I could use that, which I definitely like. But I also think just like taking out this is pretty good. That still seems like a lot of value there. And then I could just erasure this and then take a trade, and that's pretty solid as well. Definitely want to kill this just because it can really spiral out of control. Okay. So we just answered their whole board. Feeling pretty good about that one. So one thing to note is that the juggernauts here, they see how they're zero cost. These are considered tokens essentially. So uh, if you ever like bounce a token back to your opponent's hand or uh, banish it to the singularity, it gets removed from the game. So the 4-4... If I had used it on the 3-6, it actually would just not come back even if this died. Uh, okay, so I did kind of hold on to this <laughs> card the whole game, um, and that's a great target. So I'm going to just steal that, make that mine. Thank you. And uh, probably make them cry a little bit. Sorry. <laughs> and we don't really need this. We can just bank that. Uh, this card's pretty cool. The Void Touch Novice. So... Um, Deals one damage, and if it kills the minion, it'll banish to your uh, singularity. Uh, but what's cool about this thing is that it keeps growing. So when the 2 2 will die, it'll go into your singularity as a 5 cost 4 4. Uh, and then if that one were to die, it would go into your singularity as an 8 cost 6 6. So it's kind of like a sticky thing that's really difficult to um, get rid of. So if you have cards that, like, say, pull a card from your singularity you'd be able to like okay, okay. get the five five out and then keep chaining it so yeah that's shroud for you hopefully that was a good display of how annoying shroud can be for your opponent just banish everything and you know answer all of their their units i i think that should give you a general idea of how how to play it again if you're a control player you're familiar with tcgs i'm sure you'll you get the gist 
but if you're new to card games, um, your role in this uh, matchup most of the time is to not be the one being super aggressive. Obviously that could change uh, depending on the state of the game, but generally speaking, you're trying to answer your opponent's threats, control the game because your plays are kind of stronger in the late game, like we saw with that Dark Allure, the eight cost effect where I was able to steal their unit. You wanna control the game till you get to that point and then you've got really powerful plays such as that. Uh, so yeah. That's, uh, that's Shroud. I hope you guys enjoyed this and it was helpful. If it was, please uh, leave a comment letting me know that it was or just how your experience has been with Parallel so far. And yeah, thank you guys for watching. I am really loving Parallel. There's going to be a lot of content on this channel um, of Parallel, so uh, make sure to subscribe if you want more from it. So thank you so much for watching this video and I'll see you guys later. Bye.